Roswell Flight Test Crew here at Interdrone in Las Vegas, Nevada. Be sure to subscribe for our updates from the show. And I'm talking to Josh Schiff from Habaco. How are you doing, Josh? Doing well. It's a pleasure seeing you. Good to see you, too. Now, I understand you guys released a new product here at the show this week. What is it? We did. This is the Zero Explorer drone. It's a 370 size camera platform. Uh, it's a really, really solid drone with a lot of great advanced features to it. Up to 16 programmable waypoints, a follow me feature. Um, it also has a point of interest feature as well, so it'll circle around that point of interest while keeping the camera focused on it as well. Now, from what I understand, this aircraft comes in three different models or something like that. How does that work? Yeah, it's actually got basically three different packages. So with those packages, you have the Explorer, just the standard Explorer package. And with that, you get the drone, the everything you need to fly, just minus the camera and gimbal. Then you have the G version. So with the G version, you have a three axis gimbal and that's GoPro 3 and GoPro 4 compatible. And then we have the V option, which is what I've got in my hands here. And with that, you've got the three axis gimbal plus a 1080p proprietary camera as well. All right, now I've got the radio for the Zero here. It looks like a pretty nice piece of gear, really sleek. Do you want to tell me about it? Yeah, abso absolutely. Um, it's one of the biggest things when I first got to experience the Zero drone. It was just the effort, and you could see they really thought about the quality in the radio. Was, you could see they didn't leave any details behind. So the biggest thing is just the feel. It's, it's got a substantial weight to it. So you really feel like you're holding something, which is nice. Um, and also the gimbals are really silky smooth. So again, the they actually thought about the radio. Um, it's not an afterthought where you can see that in some of the products. So some of the cool features on it, it's got indication LEDs here. So it'll tell you like the battery of the radio itself to let you know that you're in good shape there. Uh, GPS, so you, it'll let you know red or green if you've got GPS signal. Connection with the drone, which is obviously always important. And then your Wi-Fi connection as well. Slightly above that, you've got the three different buttons. So the first one here is the auto land and auto takeoff feature. So you can press that button and the zero will automatically take off and go to a hover. Um, you depress that button, fly around, and when you're ready to, ready to land, just hit that button again and it will automatically land at the spot it is, is at at that point. If you want, you can hit the home button, which will actually fly it back to the place that it, um, the ESCs were armed and it'll land at that point. And then you've also got the intelligent control feature as well. So that's um, commonly known as headless. So if you're getting used to drones and not really got your orientations quite solid yet, um, you can press that down. And then any way you move your right stick is the way the drone's gonna fly. So it completely eliminates needing to know orientations. Now I also noticed there's a three position switch towards the top of the radio. What does that do for you? These are essentially your dual rates. In the app, they're called gears. Really they're dual rates. And one of the sharp features with the Zero is that it's not using a traditional dual rate. It's actually monitoring the speed of the drone. So it's actually monitoring meters per second and adjusting for that. So it gives you a much more solid feel and really responds to wind and stuff a lot more accurately. Okay, so what does position one, position two, and position three do for you? So position one is the easiest. It's very, very slow, but it's also great for camera flying as well. So you're not gonna get bumpy, jittery movement. It also has like, protective gates as well, so it won't fly more than 50 meters high, and it won't fly 50 meters away from its takeoff point as well. In mode two and mode three, it's a little quicker, each one prospectively, and those gates have been eliminated for you so you can fly wherever. This is obviously a GPS platform. In the flight mode one, it'll only fly in GPS mode. If you wanna fly without the GPS, in mode two and mode three, you have that ability. Got it, got it. Now, do you know what these are going to be selling for? Standard Explorers we're projecting to be at $499, and again, that's without the camera or the gimbal. The G version, which is a three axis gimbal that's GoPro 3 and GoPro 4 compatible, we're projecting at $699. And then the V version with the 1080p camera and three axis gimbal, we're projecting at $799. And then when do you expect this to be available for people to buy? We're, we're hoping for mid October to late October. Outstanding. Now, of course, the most important question. Can Teckenstein take this thing in the cage and fly it? We're gonna find out. <laughs> All right. So I wanna put a couple things out with the radio because I'm gonna fly it in a second here. This is nice. It has these little grippy pieces here, so it has a nice feel in the hands. And they put the power switch below this metal piece here so it can't be hit, and it is metal. And my favorite feature is this. It's for a cell phone. So it hides completely inside the radio. You can tilt it and you can position it, it's very nice. Um, and of course, on the back here, this is a range extender for your cell phone, because your cell phone's not expected to go as long as the aircraft is far range wise, so that is basically retransmit your signal, it's very cool. So I like this feature, that's my favorite actually, this little. So, let's go flying. 
Okay, so about to take off this little aircraft here, this kind of small, but turbo cage. So to arm, just uh, roll sticks down, armed, and throttle up. Requires a bit more throttle to get in the air than I thought it would. Up. There we are. That's better. It responds a little different than I was thinking. I was thinking Phantom, but it's a little bit, it's a little quicker. The yaw authority on level two, which I'm currently at, is very, very weak. It doesn't want to turn very fast, but it might make a very nice, smooth pirouette, perhaps. It has a lot of movement, though. I'm surprised. So it flies pretty good. I wish the cage were bigger, though, as I can't really show what I can do with the aircraft in an area so small, but... It's snappy. I will give it that. Oh, he's got some haptic feedback on the radio. And the camera here looks good. The gimbal is holding the camera perfectly steady. I'm watching it right now, and nothing. <laughs> That's nice. So this is the proprietary gimbal with the little camera in there, and it's just, it's snappy. I'm, I'm going back and forth aggressively, and it's just rock solid. That's quite nice, actually. This is a, a nice little aircraft. I'm, I rather enjoy it, actually. Again, I just wish I could be outdoors or in a bigger cage. This is so restrictive. It wants to go fast. It's not a slow aircraft. It's got a bit of power to it. And they say landing is very easy. It's such a small, spindly aircraft. Let's take a look. Okay. And landing. Let's go straight down on the ground. And throttle down, power off. <laughs> Perfect. That's how that works. This is, this is fun. This is a fun little aircraft. I rather enjoy flying it, actually. 